Hello there. Uh, I decided to do a video uh, for this project, um, just sort of because it went well last time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope that's all right. Uh, I'm going to include uh, my my references on like a different document that I'm going to turn in. Turn in. Um, so yeah, but I'm, I'm going to start with a definition of intersectionality. Um, it came mostly from the Crenshaw article and uh, um, someone told me she's the one that like came up with the term. So I, I thought this would be a good one to look at. Um, so uh, uh, intersectionality is the idea that uh, that uh, different discrimination categories compound when they're uh, uh, when it when they both relate to the same person. So I have a little example here. Um, a woman could face sexism and a black man uh, could face, uh, racism. Um, but, uh, a black woman has an intersectional identity there and, uh, she faces a, a, a oppression, a compounded oppression from, uh, both her racial and gendered identity. Um, so I guess a, uh, a kind of intersectionality that relates more to this course is, um, uh, sort of just the first thing that came to mind when, when I, when I thought about, uh, intersectionality and disability was disability and its relationship to class status, wealth, that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, I have uh, some statistics here to start off, um, uh, about this intersection. Um, so, uh, let's see. So this is just a sort of a basic fact from Britannica, but, um, apparent, uh, so, the statistics here are that 15.1% of students with disabilities have a bachelor's degree or higher, uh, um, but 33% uh, of people without disabilities have that same status. Um, and I guess that sort of just establishes that there's like uh, an apparent problem there because having a, a degree um, well, the first thing I thought when I read that was that having a degree is, uh, so related to, to social class, um, and, uh, and to wealth. Um, so, you know, we, we know from taking this class that disability is a very broad, or someone with disability is a very broad statement. Uh, and I'll go into later how, <clears throat> you know, more severe or different, you know, difference between physical and, and, uh, and cognitive and, uh, learning disabilities how all those are, are sort of different, um, with, with this specific, uh, intersectionality. Um, but that's just sort of a broad statistic. Um, one thing that this sort of brought up and, uh, comes from another article that I found was, or another study that I found was, um, uh, the relationship between disability and, uh, social mobility. Um, and this was especially interesting because it's something I'm studying in a different class right now. I'm in like a sociology class. Um, but, um, the, uh, the situation is, well, the, the study is, it was a, a study in England, but, um, they found that, um, uh, that, uh, disabled people, uh, experience very little upward, uh, social mobility, um, and, you know, contrarily a, a great, uh, downward social mobility. Um, so I guess, um, disabled people are like getting settled into uh, a social class. And that's sort of even more of an issue because uh, that's that sort of thing becomes to a certain extent uh, generational. Um, so uh, you, 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 ha you have disabilities that are sort of, um, and I'll talk about this also later, but disabilities that are sort of uh, um, not, not dealt with properly because of uh, a, a, the social class that somebody's already in. So if if someone's in a social class because their parents had a disability, and then they also have a disability and and they can't get um, the uh, the the help that they need in that social class, and you know all that's sort of related. Um, but then their situation can get just get worse, and then you have this terrible sort of feedback loop there. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, I, I also, I also just sort of mentioned here, I didn't, I didn't really find much specific research about this, um, but, um, 
something that also came to mind with social class and uh, disability is that um, lower class uh, uh, children um, in, in rougher neighborhoods um, could often experience like uh, trauma such as like PTSD or, or uh, injury like something we talked about like this is obviously far into the scale like extreme but like um, like TBI like traumatic brain injury um, or like some sort of sudden injury that could cause uh, a, a mental or a, a physical disability um, so uh, yeah that's that's just something that uh, I thought I would mention because it seems like something that that's that's prevalent when you think about um, social class and how that relates to disability um, so um, next uh, I wanted to talk about um, sort of my uh, experience with this intersectionality um, like I said it was the it was the first thing I thought of when I thought of uh, an intersectionality with with disability and education in particular so um, I must have some level of experience with it um, I talked about in the last like video I did just in like my introduction that um, I, uh, I, I I went to Catholic school like my elementary school like my whole elementary school period and then I like switched to public school so I, I was at a point where I was like old enough to know like to really be like co like aware of of the changes that were going on there or the differences um but um i don't remember any severe severe students with disability or students with um severe disabilities i guess or like 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 the disabilities that um that i as a as a fellow fifth grader would notice um so uh yeah, maybe maybe it was uh, an issue of not um, accepting those students to the school, and that that's something that that I sort of thought of. Uh, and then I I actually have a study here that talks about that, so I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, one thing that I also wanted to mention is that, um, and this is sort of something that came up later in my life. Some of those one of those memories that like you sort of um, something that happens and you like don't really think about it for a long time, and then later you're like, oh, that's what was going on there. So they, they definitely thought that I, for a little bit, one of my teachers at least, um, she was like a nun. She thought that I was autistic. Um, and she, she was like trying many methods to sort of, um, uh, I guess help with like my sensory. And I, and I understand that she was trying, but, um, one thing, basically the, the big thing that, that I thought when I, when I, that I think when I think about, uh, my experience in private school and how that, um, relates to students with uh, disability, and I want to be clear. I don't know if I mentioned this. The reason I'm talking about this is because uh, private schools are generally related to um, to a to a, a an upper class uh, students with disabilities who come from upper class families, um, and so that's how it sort of relates to this intersectionality. Um, so yeah, so. I guess, uh, moving forward from that, um, I guess, uh, yeah, so the study that I have that's about, uh, private schools, um, so I have, uh, this is an article from Taylor, I, sh I should reference it, like I said, um, Taylor basically calls out, uh, a, a problem with, um, and this is sort of the first thing I wanted to talk about for, um, uh, current efforts to, to eliminate the issue, and this is sort of one perspective that I thought was really interesting. Um, she talks, well, her article is about, let me pull it up here so I get the title. Um, uh, it's about um, special education in, in private schools in particular. That's, it's a more simple t title than I thought. Um, but uh, so her, one big thing about her argument is that, um, that, uh, like federal legis legislation, um, like IDEA, uh, is being implemented much better in public schools. Um, and that she, in her research, um, sort of ran into, uh, uh, a problem that was, uh, that administrators and principals knew extremely little about special education. Um, 
So, uh, I guess my question was, in, in this case, is, is, uh, is social class this, like, uh, necessarily that much of an advantage for, for students with disabilities? Um, and I, it's like, I, I know that it is in a lot of ways. And my other, the other research that I found, um, sort of suggest, definitely suggests that. Um, but I thought it was interesting to start with this, um, because, um, yeah, it's just, it's interesting to think about, like, um, I guess, a a, a a lot of, um, upper class, uh, you know, parents who have, uh, children with disabilities, maybe, maybe send their students to private schools thinking that they'll have a, a better, uh, education there, but, um, or a more specialized education, but a lot of times teachers and principals in, in those schools don't actually really know much like, like, uh, educators in, in the public school system do. Um, so that's something that, that's, uh, that's interesting to think about. Um, and that's sort of one area of, uh, of, of efforts to address the issue is how, uh, I guess, in in this author's, from this author's perspective, um, private schools don't really, uh, in a sense, uh, know what they're, know what they're doing there. Um, so the next one that I want to talk about is, um, is, uh, the, uh, this, this is, uh, data from the American Psychological Association. Um, and I, I more just found like, a like a, a, a piece about how they were, uh, integrating, um, social class into like, um, psychology and sociology curriculum. So more when you're teaching about, um, the, the brain and, um, I guess it, it also disabilities, you're, you're sort of talking about social class and this is more just like tools to go about that. Uh, so I guess that's a form of, uh, current efforts. Um, I guess some, uh, uh, here's a quote from that, uh, acknowledging human behavior and disabilities as functioning within the social environments, um, is heavily influenced by uh, available resources. Um, uh, it focuses on uh, interactions between social statuses in uh, in the curriculum and, and that sort of thing. And that's and that's what it provides is uh, like sil syllabi exercises. Um, one interesting thing was it provided uh, a way to teach uh, a legislative guide so that. Um, I guess so that students can go be active in the subject. Um, the next, uh, the third, uh, current effort that I wanted to talk about was, um, uh, it was a, an article written by, a uh, um, quadriplegic and that's sort of like the source I have, um, by a, a quadriplegic man. And, uh, he talks about how, um, uh, affordable and accessible housing is something that's crucial, uh, that a lot of, um, dis disabled people, um, especially ones that, um, can't live totally, uh, independently, one that they, um, struggle with a lot, especially when you look at, uh, the intersection between, you know, social class and, and, and this specific disability. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah. So he, yeah, he talks about um, uh, how it's important to get states to compensate at at home personal care assistance, and that was his sort of uh, his big argument. And that's a uh, you know just like a very clear solution that he's working on there. But uh, it's interesting to think about um, that that other perspective uh, for like money as a as a a thing that influences um, people with disabilities. It's that. Um, it's not just the social class of the person with a disability, which it certainly is, but it's also how much the, uh, the people that are paid to help the person with disabilities, how much they're getting paid, um, because there's not enough people doing it, I guess. Um, so, uh, f finally, my opinion, um, I, I sort of have like, a, I'm mostly going to be reading here. Um, so what I have here is that, uh, money seems to be one of the main things um, holding back, uh, disabled people and disabled students in general. Um, I agree, uh, with, with most of the authors that I talked about just now, um, that, uh, addressing the issue, uh, starts with, 
um, acknowledging the prevalence of this specific uh, social class to disability intersectionality. Um, I, I, I want to be a teacher, so I'm, uh, you know, I'm naturally inclined to, uh, so my opinion that, um, on, on how, uh, how the issue could be addressed, um, sort of supported by, uh, my own, uh, research, um, is that, um, uh, m money seems to be, uh, one of the main things, um, that, uh, that holds back, uh, disabled people and disabled students, um, in general. Uh, I agree with, um, most of the authors that, that I discussed, um, that addressing the issue starts with acknowledging the, the prevalence of social class and, uh, disability, the specific intersectionality. Um, I want to be a teacher, so, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm naturally, uh, inclined to believe that, uh, educational strategies, um, uh, to teach intersect, this intersectionality is a good way to start, you know, like, I guess I think social progress. And then I, you know, I start, I've taken enough education classes where I start thinking about, um, education when I, uh, when I think that, um, so, uh, using something like what the American Psychological Association does, uh, like sort of a framework like that, uh, could be useful. Um, uh, the Taylor article, which is the one that's, uh, talked about, uh, private, private school special education, um, uh, suggests that, uh, policy change, um, uh, could, um, not, not be, uh, uh, anywhere close to complete, I guess, uh, cause, uh, she talks about IDEA and how, uh, that, uh, did not, does not really, uh, I guess, manifest in, in some schools. Uh, so I guess, um, educators should definitely advocate for policy change. Um, and there's a lot of ways to, uh, to do that, like getting involved with like a advocacy organization, um, that sort of thing. Uh, but also, uh, teaching, uh, by, by example, uh, by being a, a teacher who's a patient and, uh, and, uh, is uh, knowledgeable about disabled students. Uh, so teaching by example in that and then sort of implementing it uh, in your curriculum, um, you know, education that specifically relates to this intersectionality, intersectionality between uh, class and, uh, and uh, social class and disability. Um, so uh, yeah, this could uh, lead to progress. And, uh, and I, think it, I think it could help to start dealing with this issue. Um, because, uh, I don't know, like, like I said at the beginning, I think it's, um, it's one of the first things I think of, and, uh, when I think about disability intersectionality, so, um, yeah, I think, I think I, I think I, I learned a lot with this project, because now I feel for, sort of specifically, um, educated on it, so, I, I think I'll be acting on my, my opinion here, so, thank you for watching, um, Bye-bye.